All right, so this is Ola, who, with uh, whom we chatted in March. Ola, hello. Hi. How are you doing? Good. How do we ask that? Yak. 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 Like, uh, okay. Let's get in we're, we're getting in the car. Through. We're going to talk about how Ola is starting her business. This is one of the biggest refugee uh, assistance places left in Warsaw. And uh, see the other clip. Uh, funding is about to run out, so you should definitely, in the comments, we'll have the place where you can donate. Um, Ten thousand dollars, I believe, uh, will make a huge difference if I remember the numbers correctly in them being able to keep going. Funding is about to run out, but we're here to talk with Ola about what it's been like to start a business. Yep. Uh, so, what have you learned since March? Um, so, since March, I probably learned that everything is possible. Uh, even if you believe that, no, you're not gonna do it, mm -hmm. you can do it. Okay. Um, that it's pretty easy to start a business, especially when you're safe and you don't have to, like, to move up anywhere. Uh, but it's possible even like in extreme situations when I moved to Poland and I had nothing but still it happened and now I finally launched my school yeah. and that's possible yeah. everything is possible everything is possible um, biggest challenge what was the biggest challenge um, probably to do like the final steps because when it's still not launched so it's like on like preparing you, you can prepare for like your whole life to do that and you need to be brave enough to say okay like that's enough like I will uh, start right now and yeah. even if something is unprepared I will do it on, on my way yeah. and it's it's easier than just to preparing your whole life to launch it and never launch it you know? um, and then uh unexpected twist or amusing story that you want to share some moment that you think is both funny entertaining and educational oh well that's hard um i would say that uh, i did a break in my like teaching uh as a private tutor for mm -hmm. for a while like from the beginning of the war because i couldn't like uh come back like to the regular schedule and uh, when i said like in my head that i'm ready to start every student that i had texted me back and said that oh so are you ready to like continue like you know it's like they just read my mind and after that when i launched the uh, the school and posted it in my story and in instagram i had a lot of support and i didn't even expect to have the support so i just you just need to believe in yourself and everything will be great very optimistic and actually yeah. the, the person that was running the refugee service center that might run out of funding in 11 days and yeah. put 1,000 people on the street that was his main takeaway at the end when we asked him you know are you an optimist he said heck yes uh, and, yeah. and that was also nobody who's gonna watch that video is gonna believe it that that man is almost 70 years old yeah. and I asked him what's your secret uh, he said being an optimist yeah. and the people that work with him said also being a good person so there you go, free free aging advice or, or counter aging advice. Why don't you tell us about the business and how they can find the business? Uh, yeah, uh, what's the name of it and what does it do? Okay, so my business uh, is an English school. Uh, right now, it works mostly for Ukrainians, but I'm working on opening it in Poland as well. Um, so I have uh, uh, like three teachers in general, including me, and uh, all that we're working on is we want to improve. Um, improve level English of Ukrainians and uh, uh, other people as like other nationalities as well and uh, that's like the main goal because English is really important right now and not a lot of people actually know, like can speak English even when they understand and so our main purpose is to uh, teach you how to speak like just you know uh, crash your language barrier and say that you can do it just speak, just speak and that's all um, also is it tutoring? Is it one-on-one? -on -one? Is it done it's in small groups? It's group lessons and okay. individual lessons because for different people it's the different, you know, for someone it's more comfortable to be just one-on-one -on -one with the teacher. So you and customize? Yes. Wow. So, and it also, must be expensive. Uh, it's not really expensive actually, it's affordable and uh, a big plus of our school mm -hmm. that the part of the income we donate on uh, our army, Ukrainian army, so it's still uh, in this way we're not only educating Ukrainians, mm -hmm. we're also supporting the military which kind of gives a push to our success. Another huge question would be, how do you price if somebody's desperate in a refugee? We, we just saw that some people yeah. that, you know, uh, maybe they lack the contacts and, mm -hmm. and, or maybe psychologically they're traumatized for whatever reason, they, they can't start over. They don't have cash. We mm -hmm. saw people volunteering their services yeah. 
to each other. Um, not even a barter system, just everything mm -hmm. just given for free. To somebody like that, would you charge the money? How would you approach um, that? I would say that it's more, again, it's individually because before our lessons and before the pricing, I conduct by myself the first like trial lesson when I communicate with the person. And if I understand that this person is a refugee and has a low income, I of course I will lower the charge and it will be something minimum because um, Psychologically, money is still important. You need to yeah. give something in order to not to you know forget about it. To be invested. Yes. Into it. So you're investing in your in your like uh, education, and you keep, yes. in, because of that you want to do that. And very strangely, the amount that we pay affects the amount to it in which we're invested in something very often. Yeah. Um, anyway, so so it's a sliding scale. You adjust your prices based yeah. on people's needs and yes. abilities, and then you tailor the experience. Why don't you tell us about? Uh, you know, I spent most of my life. Uh, it's kind of scary to think. I think I've spent most of my life now in the world of education. And there's always the room to improvise and adjust. And then there's the idea of having a lesson plan, and a syllabus. And uh, What's your approach? Do you use other people's books, other people's methodology? Did you come up with your own? Did you, mm -hmm. Like, what was your plan when you mm -hmm. took your first student? So what I realized that, like, it just came to me with time. Mm -hmm. What I realized that I like to use with groups, I like to use Flipped Classroom. Maybe you heard about this mythology. It's amazing mythology, to be honest. Flipped Classroom, why don't you define it? Yeah, so for me, Flipped Classroom is when you learn about, for example, like, this boring grammar. Because you, most of the people think that grammar is boring. I think so, too. Yeah, so because of that, you learn it by yourself and on the lesson with the teacher you just discuss the questions that you have so you don't spend the whole lesson sitting like this and, li and listening to your teacher just explaining the grammar and kind of sleeping so if I understand to put in my own words yeah. this, is, this is a I think what I should start doing. Yeah. I need to do more and more of this. I mean, I do some of it, but basically you have the students explain the concept. You don't yes. explain the grammar rule. Yeah. You say, okay, why don't you there, uh, Ursula or whatever, explain mm -hmm. to me yes. this grammatical rule. They yeah. have to explain yes. it. Yes. So I'm asking, for example, if we came through, uh, let's say, present simple and present continuous, like two, two, two time, like tenses, yeah. and I ask, so what is the difference? Let's like, and it's a group of four people. Let's yeah. like define what is the difference, like what is the construction that we use for different tenses? When do we use it? Why we are saying I go to school and I'm not I'm going to school? What's the difference between this like two sentences? They are simple, mm -hmm. like extremely simple, but yeah. what is the difference between? Yeah. Uh, so what sense they are carrying yeah. and uh, in this way students are uh, like they learn how to when to use the exact tense and it's easier for them because they learn it by themselves right. so in the for example individual if it's in a one-on-one uh, -on -one lesson it's uh, more uh, based on the uh, students preferences if it's a group uh, like lessons so we have a group of four people maximum so it's a really small group and it's really easy to interact with every student and also what we do we have two lessons a week with a teacher and sometimes teachers can be flipped so for example uh, on Mondays I will be teaching and on uh, Friday another teacher will be teaching so we can control for example I missed something another teacher will catch and under explain more Interesting. Uh, and on for example in the middle of middle of the week we're gonna have an um, flip classroom lesson when I just put everything in Google classroom and I graded the day uh, at the same day Google classroom is yes. what you call your learning management system I would say that it's just the cheapest option uh, okay. and I started with that I okay. really uh, want to create my own platform uh, because it's going to be more comfortable because you will have the schedule there, everything. Now I have to use different platforms uh, just because I, it's, it's the cheapest option for me right now. Well, Alexander, Alex, if you're watching this, I might introduce you. Yeah. Uh, uh, as, uh, if, so if, I know if, him. Okay. Yeah, we met. Okay, so maybe he's willing to help you with uh, creating uh, a platform while he works on his platform. Maybe. As, as proof to potential investors yeah. or... Uh, clients that, hey, I can do this. Look at this platform I built for Ola. Yeah, Olaf. I need to talk to him, actually, because you, I have his products. You're here. If you're watching this, <laughs> you're hearing it first. Yeah. Um, so, what other questions do you think I should ask you that my students could learn from or that anybody watching this could learn? Um, I would probably give an advice uh, that it doesn't matter uh, at what, what point of life you are. Like, uh, for example, you may like suffer from depression or you might fly, flee from war or you can be like broke because of like you don't have any money just start working and uh, 
start with something easy, with small ta steps. For example, for me, it was like to prepare, like, for firstly, like one lesson, like kind of plan uh, a day. And it helped a lot because I created a course and it was like a small step. Like, yes, I prepared a lesson and what did it give me? And now I have more free time. For example, I can uh, go to like uh, with you somewhere because I know that I prepared everything and everything is prepared. And for my teachers, it's easier because they know what they're teaching and I can control that, for example. They, I know that they're not just sitting with students and getting money for nothing. I know that they're using my materials and that they, uh, they uh, give the same knowledges, knowledge that I give. So that's also really good. So just do like little steps and it will help you a lot. This is, this is a big uh, thing to point out that, that you are how old right now? 19. And you have two employees? Yes. Uh, and you were displaced from Kharkiv, then to yeah. Kiev, then you ran to Warsaw. You worked with Robert Poinsky. Robert, Nana, hello. Hey. Thanks for introducing us. And uh, you started your business, uh, this was how many months ago? No? Uh, I would say that I, I'm registered as an entrepreneur from September uh, of the, the previous year, yeah. uh, September 20. September 21? Yeah. Okay. And. Uh, Wait, you registered already before the war started? Yes. Oh, interesting. Did yes. you know that you would be coming here? Um, so? I, so I registered as an entrepreneur because I was working as a tutor for uh, from that point two years already. Okay. And so because of that, I wanted to actually pay taxes for what I get. So, you know, because wow. it, before that, it was like I had one or two or three students and it was, you know, nothing. Informal. Yeah, yeah, and it wasn't formal. So, and wow, you registered to avoid actually being accused of tax avoidance. Yes, of, of I really wanted to pay table. taxes because yeah. I know that for uh, I want to be yeah. a responsible citizen yeah. and I want to pay taxes and that's I was working uh, by myself but I was yeah. paying taxes as well yeah. and now I have uh, some employees and uh, so now I can develop more and I will, I'm not going to have some problems because I, I actually uh, registered as an entrepreneur. So that's a, a huge lesson to anybody watching this. Uh, when you're starting early and there's that question of, you know, do, do you do things under the table? I'm, I'm just checking our application here. Are we going the, the right way? Because that would, that would be very devastating <laughs> if um, one of us has to be at an airport at a certain time and, uh, and we are not going the right way. Anyways, thanks for that minor uh, glance, uh, tolerating my minor glance at my phone. Uh, to, I want to emphasize this point. You are 19 years old in a place that is not your native country and you have two employees yeah. and these employees are Ukrainians and Ukraine. Yeah. Ukraine. So actually in one of the Ukrainians, she's in Poland in Warsaw right now. We kind of met, we didn't know that she, like I didn't know that she's in Warsaw, okay. but uh, she actually studies here. So uh, that's that's how like I found her. She just uh, put in a resume yeah. and I read it and I liked her as a, as a professional. And okay. that's, that's how we met and after that we realized that both of, our, uh, both of us are in Warsaw. Wow. Uh, two employees, and then yeah. how long did you have to sort of onboard and train them? How long does that take? Um, so I just um, because they already have an experience. It's not like a newbies in the teaching, you know, area. Like uh, I would say, teaching uh, area. Let's say in this way. Because of that, they already have some experience. So uh, on our like before we started working, I asked them what techniques do they use, how they provide lessons. They created their lesson plans with me. The same like uh, and. She said, hey, that's what I was doing, and I said, great, so I know what you're doing, and uh, after that, before, like, uh, first their first lesson, I had a call with them when I shared all the materials that I prepare, provide for them, and uh, I said that you can do it if you need my help, sometimes I will be joining you at your lessons, and I will just, like, oh, listening, I'm not going to participate, I'm just going to listen, and I will uh, sometimes maybe text you in privately in chat and Zoom, and I will actually correct you on something. Oh, interesting. Or, you'll, you'll listen in. So these yeah. lessons are sometimes remote. So, yeah, so sometimes I'm just, uh, like, I can actually say, for example, like the first lesson, uh, when everyone knows me because I was the, that person that has, the, that they met for the first time because I was providing the free trial lesson. Uh, so uh, they know me and I am introducing to the, their new teacher to them. And after that I can stay, I can just, like, turn off my camera and mute myself and I will just, like, uh, watch how they communicate. To so they, they might be meeting in person. And you might just be there, there in, by video presence? Uh, I would say that it's not possible for now by meeting in person. It's only Zoom lessons. Okay. So it's all online because 
uh, it helps to... Just one more yep. proof that we actually are in Warsaw. There's the National Stadium. <laughs> in case anybody doubts where we are, we are on location. Anyways, back to the story. So, so I want to understand this really well. You can listen in on lessons. Yeah. Majority of your lessons, are, are any of your lessons remote, online, yeah. virtual? All of them. All of them are. Yeah. And that allows you to drop in and out of yeah. them. Uh, and it, so this actually answers one of my big last questions I was going to ask, and then maybe we'll pause and see if there's anything else that you... Uh, we'll check on how much battery we have left and see if we can still record more. Um, quality control. Mm -hmm. How do you judge success? How do you find clients in a crowded market? I imagine mm -hmm. the, the, the place must be full of people trying to sell themselves as English tutors. So let's go through that for, in logical sequence from what you just described, that you have virtual online classes you can listen in. Is that your major quality control? Is that how you maintain quality? You're just, you could be listening uh, anytime. I can listen. I also uh, like um, get feedback from students. I text them and say, hey, what do you think about the lessons? There are some questionnaires. When, when uh, yes, okay. they, they are anonymous. Yeah. And you can just say that, so who's yeah. your teacher? Yeah. Please like, yeah. rate this teacher. What do you, what do you like? What do you yeah. don't like? Uh, if talking about the measures of success, I think that's also it's more important uh, for a student to feel that he has some improvements than for the teachers because sometimes we will see that uh, well he could do better but you know for this person is already amazing so because of that at the first trial lesson I will always ask what are your goals how you, how will you understand that you're huge. improving huge. so because this is huge. Because sometimes there will be like a plateau when you you, you think that you don't improve. A plateau. Yeah. Great word. Plateau yeah. where you think you're not improving. Yes. It's just like a huge time when you're growing and then you're just stuck. And in this time you need to, you need to have motivation. But yeah. at the beginning you wrote down your goals and we kind of uh, talked about it and said that, hey, your main goal is that, that and that. Let's work. You will, you will overcome it. So this is, this is so interesting. Uh, find another question along these lines because we live in a world right now where we're reevaluating re surveys. How do we judge success? Should we should we take student opinions into account? Because some people accuse uh, surveys of being um, that there's unconscious bias against uh, women teachers, people of color, and uh, I'm not commenting one way or the other on that controversy. My point is this: Do you play some role up front in, in screening and saying, you know what, I don't want to take this client because I know that they are prickly, that they're going to be a pain, that they're never going to be satisfied. They're they're gonna think of some reason to complain about the teacher. Do you ever, do you ever, do you ever fire your clients or screen actively not to get them, but to actually say, you know what, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to serve this person. Uh, so usually, if it's uh, my student, I have the right to say, like, it's a private lesson. If it's, it would be a public school, then it's a different lesson yeah, because you, you gotta know, take can come in. Because it's a private school, it, yeah. depends, it needs to be a, like a contract between student and teacher. Yeah. And if we not, if we don't meet, it, it's not the reason to create a scandal or a conflict that hey, I don't like you. Yeah. It's just the reason that see, so because we're different, uh, we have different characters, mm. like you know, different behaviors. Because of that, we don't really fit each other at mm. teaching. Like I'm, I'm not the best person for teaching you, yeah. and that's just the reason. Like, yeah. and if the person likes everything and. I'm just not a fan of it. Sometimes it happens, and I, I'm kind of okay with that. If it's with another teacher, I will always ask uh, for the opinion of the teacher and of the student, and I will try to judge, uh, you know, kind of mm, not biased because uh, sometimes the teacher can be wrong and sometimes the student can be wrong. It's, it's or the truth is in the middle, or there's yeah, a fragment of reality. 50, in the 50 percent yeah, 50-50% disciple. Yeah. Uh, fascinating topic on that one. What about the question of? Um, has it been hard getting clients, or has it been easy for you? Um, What's your primary uh, primary channel for people coming to you? Is it are you gonna so say word of mouth? Usually, yes. <laughs> to be honest, because okay. like you have one student, and yeah. they would say to their friends, and their friends would say to another to someone else, and yeah. they're like, "Hey, I really want to have lessons." I so, really do you bother with advertising? Um, so I buy the advertising, uh, the advertising, and our Instagram page is, uh, has the targeted advertisement on it. Yep. So I'm kind of investing in it. Um, but we're still like working on getting more people because it's like freshly new. It's just like our Instagram page was launched maybe like a week or two ago. So that's that's why it's only like new. So we're still getting subscribers okay. and uh, creating posts and working on it actively. How, what should people search for uh, in case they are too lazy to look in the comments below? Mm -hmm. Do you want to mention the name? your business or the Instagram uh, handle? Hustle English. Hustle? Yes. So H-U-S-S-L-E or H-U-S-T-L-E? T-L-E. 
So like hustle to hurry. To, yeah, yeah. Okay, there you go. Hustle.com or hustle.pl? Uh, so it's more, you, you, it's better to find it in Instagram. It's just hustle.eng. Hustle.eng, E-N-G. Yeah. E-N-G, E-N-G, yes. E-N-G for, short for English, right? Hustle.eng on Instagram. Yes. And it's just easier. It's an Ukrainian for the most Ukrainians, but okay. I think that I will create like translations are everywhere. That's the first thing. Yeah. And also, I'm uh, I want to launch the good like Ukrainian page, and after that to continue on the Polish one and maybe to do it more like worldwide. Uh, maybe last question for now, and I keep yeah. saying we're going to pause to check on the battery level. Um, okay. Any question you wish I had asked you? You would ask me. Yeah. What question did you expect that I didn't ask? Um, or I what think were you actually? What were you, is there anything left that you're dying to tell people besides get after you know, it? Actually, like the change between like uh, if you will compare like two videos of me like yeah. at the beginning, you, you didn't recognize me when you saw me because like finally I had some rest and I kind yeah. of uh, got my life back on track. Yeah. So through this time, even I was a coordinator of the refugee center. That's yeah. when you met me. Yeah. And now I'm also a student of Warsaw uh, University, so I'm gonna be in Warsaw for the next three years, and I'm gonna learn English philology. Uh, so that's what I want to define work philology in. for people who don't know what <laughs> yeah. philology is. Uh, philology is like linguistics. It's just a, a science about language, about languages, and it's about. It's actually I will study English language. To be honest, like very cool, very yeah. cool. So I'm, I want to work on it, and so. It's easy to put your life on track, you just need to stay humble. Wow, so, God, there's so many takeaways. Uh, but a few <laughs> of them, what you just ended with is uh, get after it, stay humble. Yeah. Uh, start even when you're not ready. Uh, start small, yeah. the small steps. Yes. And um, uh, you also, I think you said something very powerful, which is no matter what your condition or what you've been through or your age, yeah. uh, here you are at 19 with two employees, and they're full-time employees? Uh, yes, they're not full-time, it's more like I give them, uh, they give me a schedule that they're comfortable working with, yeah. with yeah. and yeah. I am trying to adjust it with students, so that's, that's how it works. So they can be flexible as people, and uh, yeah. it's more like a freelance, I would say, you know, like that kind of way. And since we are still, you know, one of the, we just, again, toured that refugee center mm -hmm. that might be going offline in 11 days, and uh, if anybody's watching this in the future, you know what happened yeah. in the past. You might be watching this yeah. in a year, but right now, as of mid-August 2022, is there a message you want to tell the world, anybody stumbling across this, about what, how they should best engage with the Ukrainian cause or... Mm -hmm. Any, any other cause, any other things that you want to say about the state of the world? Um, well, it's really important to help us and uh, uh, like the first thing, don't be quiet. Please tell about the situation. It's really helps Ukrainians because they feel supported. Because sometimes we feel like people, the world abandoned us and nobody, no one cares about us. And it's, for us it's really important because we lost our, our, our homes. Uh, second one, it's uh, if you can do a donation, that's great. Uh, please do it. Like for example, like that refugee center that we have been at. Been at. It's uh, it it keeps uh, like some people don't they don't have houses, they don't have places to come back to. So that's the reason. And the third one, be creative. Uh, that's why I say be creative because if you don't have money. Uh, do something simple and create a fundraiser and still donate, you know, like, or like do some protest, like a silent protest or just, you know, something in to support Ukrainians. So just uh, be creative in supporting my first and second point. That's all. I'd agree with that. And um, there are many problems. It's, it's in some ways a big world, but we are also coming. It's a small world. We run into people. Uh, yeah. And so, I don't know, you have the final word, words. Why don't you figure out how to sign off on this video? I would say, as uh, like you know, your two videos are gonna end the same because I will say, stay optimistic and all the problems will go away. That's that's the final. Stay part. optimistic and all the problems will go away. Uh, if anybody's stumbling across this in a place where the problems are intense, deadly, and yeah, I hope that didn't come off too light. Um, we're with you. We're thinking about you. It's not. We know it's not just Ukraine. We're yeah. not, we know that's not the only place people have lost their homes. Uh, have lost loved ones, have lost limbs, um, but you're on our minds, and I want to repeat what you said in that kitchenette when we were waiting to interview this big mm -hmm. You said one of your biggest takeaways since we last talked in March yeah. of this year was now that you got your life together is, oh my God, I'm just grateful to be alive. Yes. You were like, I don't know how I survived. That. I, that seems like a movie when I try to remember 
how I went from Kharkiv to Kiev, saw Russian soldiers, yeah. you saw Russian equipment, yeah. and then you made it to Warsaw. And so gratitude was another thing that Ola yeah. commented on, uh, especially if you're not one of those people who's losing limbs, uh, lives. Uh, let's practice being grateful. Yeah, and even if like you're you're losing uh, people close to you or you're losing limbs, it's still good that you're alive. Like you can you can. Imp- like you can change the world. It doesn't matter in what state you you are. While you you're thinking straight, I think that it's important just to stay. Uh, I don't know, just to believe in yourself and in the world and in victory. All right, it's a victory. Yeah. Slava Ukraina. Radzlav.